Greeks is Malu Kassas. We're going Japanese. Not that you could tell from the outfit, but there you go. Um, we're going to go Japanese tonight. Well, actually, originally it was going to be we're going to Wagamama. Because I saw a recipe in there, one of the Wagamama cookbooks, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make that. And then I actually discovered that actually it isn't, strictly speaking, a Wagamama recipe. It's just Wagamama make this particular dish. And it is really their recipe as such. So I'm not really pinching their recipe. And what we're going to make is a noodle dish. We're making some yaki soba. Probably didn't say that right, but in every day. So we're going to make some yaki uh, soba. And relatively simple. Don't take too long. So let's crack on. So it's a noodle dish, basically. A yaki soba means a fried noodle. Okay, so you're going to need your wok. Now I've already cooked my noodles because my noodles came dried. Now uh, you're meant to use soba noodles, but you can use udon noodles. Okay, um, strictly speaking, you call it something slightly different, but it's still the same thing. Okay, so um, you're going to want some noodles. I've got them cooked. I've got a bowl with two eggs that I'm just going to beat up in a little while. They're for your noodles. you need some bean sprouts. Unfortunately, I'm still having trouble getting fresh bean sprouts. So I've got canned ones. Um, some prawns. They can be cooked. We're going to cook ours, but you can buy them and have them cooked and add them in. You want some chicken breast. And as usual, Tesco's have supplied us with the three-breasted chicken. So we've got three breasts. Um, an onion, some spring onions, some ginger. Salt, white pepper, um, some light soy sauce, and some Worcestershire sauce. Because basically this dish is in a bit of a sort of a sweetish, stickyish sauce that is very reminiscent of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, um, so a bit of edge oil, um, and then garnish. Now uh, this this dish comes in a variety of garnishes. We're going to be adding some dried bonito flakes. Uh, Katsio Bushi, I think it is, okay. Um, some pickled ginger and some sesame seeds. Um, if you've got any other kind of pickled veg, you can add them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by thinly slicing up my onion, thinly slicing up my spring onions and having another drink. So I've just chopped up my onions, uh, the spring onions, I'm just do me my main onion. Um, so I've already told you more or less exactly what yaki show it so brief. It's not, when we say it's a traditional dish, it's not that traditional. It basically dates from after Second World War. And it is a very popular dish. Apparently it was um, on the very first Wagamama menu and it's still on there today. It's a very popular noodle dish. Um, it's sold in sort of like street stalls and things like that in Japan. Um, and it often uses pork belly um, or chicken. And we're using chicken, all right? Um, but like I say, it's sort of uh, a noodle dish with the meat and veg and cooked in this bloody bit of onion. Now come up! Good, oh, 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 good. Um, cooked in like a Worcestershire type sauce. Okay, um, sometimes they do, instead of using uh, soba noodles, which are buckwheat noodles, which are apparently a bit healthier for you. Um, some, uh, some do use udon noodles. Um, it's also sometimes um, as a topping on one of their savoury pancakes, which, uh, how do they call it? Uh, Okinomiyaki or something like that. Um, and there's also a version, he says, try not to look up and cut his fingers off, um, which is um, served in a like hot dog bun, and that is yakisoba pan. Okay, so it comes in a variety of forms. We're just making the standard popular noodle dish. 
that is served on a plate. Okay, so he says chucking some of the onion on the floor, I'm getting into trouble. So I've got my onions chopped, and um, I'm just going to need to grate the ginger when I'm ready. Um, the next thing I need to do before I do that is taking my chicken breasts and I want to sort of shred that. I want to cut that into really thin strips. So I'm going to get that cut and then we'll start cooking. Thirsty work this. It's got to be done. Right, so I've put a generous glug of vegetable oil in there and I've cut my chicken up. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grate, it's about two and a half centimetre lump of ginger. I'm just going to grate that. And then we're going to put that on to about a medium to high heat. And then we're going to chick, chuck, chick, chuck, chuck, chick, chuck the chicken and the ginger into that. And we're then going to just fry that um, until basically it starts to go brown. Yay. Um, so really, I've told you everything about yaki soba, really. Um, like I said, it was, originally I was thinking I'd do a wa uh, the Wagamama dish. Wagamama um, is a, a, actually started in Britain, started in Bloomsbury, I think it was Street and Road, in uh, Bloomsbury, London, um, based on Japanese cooking. Try and take these things off now. Um, that actually although that opened in 1992, uh, that actual original shop closed in, when was it? 2016. Uh, but they've been uh, then obviously gone on, built a big chain um, and it was sold in 2018, uh, 2018, uh, 2018 to a restaurant group, I think it was called The yes, Restaurant Group, um, who I think might be the owners of Frankie and Benny's um, and they bought that whole chain for 559 million so Mr what's his name well, I've forgotten his name who set it up although he had sold it a couple of times since then or rather he sold it and then someone else sold it and so on um, they obviously uh, they think it's worth a lot of money um, the pandemic did hit them quite hard they did lose uh, quite a lot of um, you know restaurants and staff but obviously they're still going from so just going to get my oil up temperature and then we're going to chuck all that in there and like I say I'm just going to stir fry that until it starts to go brown okay um, and then really we're just going to start adding the other stuff uh, because my prawns aren't cooked at the end of that chicken cooking I'll chuck the prawns in just to get them cooked, but we don't really want to overcook prawns, do we? Don't really want to overcook them. So, let's get cooking this lot. And uh, I'll catch you in a bit. So the chicken isn't actually browned yet, but it's cooked. And so at this point, I'm gonna add a couple of pinches of salt. And like I say, I'm gonna add some white pepper. give that a mix in and then at this point I'm going to chuck in them uncooked prawns like I say if you were um, using cooked prawns um, you would be adding these at the same time as we add the veg but because these are uncooked I'm just going to put these in now toss them for a bit until they're cooked and then we'll be adding uh, onions and bean sprouts. Now I'm not going to put my bean sprouts in at that same time because mine are canned ones. Okay, so they're already a bit soft and soggy. Okay, if you're using fresh ones, chuck them in with the onions and we just give it a few minutes tossing around. Okay, I might add a little bit more oil just before I put that veg in because there's not an awful lot in there. So, um, other than doing the sauce, and putting the noodles in. Um, so like I said, I've cooked my noodles. Uh, I've got a bowl here with two eggs in, which I'm just gonna beat up in a minute. I'm gonna chuck the noodles in there, coat them all over, because they'll be going in there like that. Oh, actually, I've told you about Wagamama. I told you about Yakisoba. Um, Wagamama 
um, are, are quite proud of the fact that they are, I think it's called Kaizen um, business. Now Kaizen is a type of, almost like a quality control type system. Um, and I always believed, like many people did, that sort of um, the Japanese became so successful that, you know, exporting all these goods, because they used to be, you know, had a bit of a reputation being a bit crap. And then they adopted this, you know, system of quality control. And suddenly this, all their gear was like, you know, well sought after. Um, and it's believed that we then in the West thought, oh, we better do what the Japs do. We better do, you know, this quality control. But actually it originated in the States. Tell you in a bit. Just gonna clean that mess up that sprayed everywhere. All right, so at this point in goes my onions. Uh, so I was telling you about this Kaizen um, process. And it essentially dates back to just after the Second World War, when the Americans, um, to help J Japan rebuild their economy and everything else, um, sent over, you know, like engineers and people like that, um, all in a bid to, you know, get Japan back on their feet again. And one of the things they did was they, they introduced this system um, which was a way of improving what they were doing um, in sort of small steps that could make a big difference. And essentially it worked from top down. So right from the very top, you know, the CEO all the way down to the guy who swept the floors, everybody was involved in this. And it tried to promote a culture that if you thought something was wrong, we stopped and then we got together and said, right, okay, what's gone wrong? What do we need to do? How can we fix it? You know, we don't blame anybody. We need to obviously get it fixed. Um, and the whole point was to try and minimize unnecessary hard work and obviously sort out problems as they came along. Um, and so it was this three step program of uh, job instruction, job method, and job relations and they made this film which um, was entitled the improvement in four steps I know I've just told you three but the the actual film they made was improvement in four steps which in Japanese translated to Kaizen Eno Young Dakai or something like that sorry my J Japanese is not very good but Kaizen and so it became known as the Kaizen method I'll tell you a little bit more in a second. Um, so I'm just cooking this through now with these veg. We want to get these veg nicely cooked. Okay, my prawns are nice and bent now. Um, I'm at this point, I'm going to add some of them bean sprouts. I'm not going to add that off the pan. Um, I think that's a bit too much. And then I'm also going to take my noodles. Um, I'm just going to beat this up a bit, my egg. I'm going to put my noodles in here what about 300 grams of noodles um, and we're just going to mix that in with that in readiness to chuck in here when we're ready when these veg are all cooked through all right so at this point i'm going to add them egg coated noodles okay and actually i might keep that and we're just now just going to Mix all that through and cook that through for a few minutes. Um, so anyway, I was telling you about Kaizen and the reason I started it was I said because uh, Wakamama like to think, you know, they adopt that principle. Uh, the most famous example is Toyota. Um, Toyota cars, or Toyota motors, um, adopted the Kaizen method very early on and Literally, if anybody during production of a car, you know, the car, you know, production line's going along, and if anybody thinks, whoa, there's a problem there, they just shut the line down. There's no sort of question about, you can't do that. Uh, they shut the line down, everybody gets together and says, right, what's the problem? 
how are we going to fix it? And everybody gets a say, you know, it's not none of this like, well, you don't know what you're bloody hell you're talking about, do you? Um, and they try and sort it out, and then they get it all back and working again. Um, so, that's your connection to Wagamama, that's your connection to Kaizen. Um, so, what we've got here now is we're almost finished. Um, the final stage is our sauce. So, I've just tossed this through. So, now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of light soy sauce. Actually, given how much we've got in here, I might go for four. And we're also then going to add the same amount of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. One, two, three, four. And now we're just going to cook that through. Okay, I'm just going to toss it in there. We're just going to cook it through for a few more minutes. Okay, and, and then we're ready to serve. And like I say, traditionally, we would serve this with some garnish. And so um, we won't chuck, you don't chuck the garnish in at this. We'll plate it out and then we'll just add the garnish to each plate. So I'm just going to cook this through for a few minutes. Like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to make it here, just sprinkle, uh, sesame seeds. sprinkle on some sesame seeds. We're going to add some bonito flake, dry bonito flakes, which um, I can't remember what recipe, I think it was a, one of my sushi recipes I did, I can't remember. Um, we're going to add some of that. Whoop. Going a bit overboard on that one. Um, and then uh, a bit of pickled ginger, which is that lovely pink colour. And then the final thing we're going to add is a sprinkling of crispy onions. I'm just about to drop that jar. And there we have our yaki soba. So let's give it a go. Let's get rid of that bit pink. Let's just go for the noodles at the minute. Mm. Get the cook of Worcestershire sauce, but it's not overpowering. So if you don't like Worcestershire sauce, it's not like, oh, I don't like this. Mm. Gingery, Worcestershire sauce. Mm. Spot on. You can see why. This is one of Japanese, Japan, sorry, my most favourite noodle dishes. Yakisoba.